plantations in the Delta. And as illustrated in this drawing, it was suggested that a solution for the Chinese problem was to send them to the South and where they could work on cotton plantations. So there was this crisis that the Chinese also uh, the character for crisis can also be interpreted as opportunity. And so what that meant was that when there was a economic downturn in the uh, price for cotton, this created the opportunity for the Chinese because the commissaries, which the plantation owners um, owned and s used to uh, sell products were closed. So the Chinese were able to open grocery stores and one of the most prominent was one in Greenville, the Joe Gao New store at the foot of Washington Street right across from the levee, which um, attracted many other Chinese relatives, cousins, brothers, uncles to come to the South in a chain migration. Chinese often lived in the back of their stores or behind their stores. And this was true not only of grocery stores, but laundries, restaurants. The early Chinese immigrants um, lived in their stores partly to save money, but also for physical safety because it was often dangerous for them to um, be out on the streets at night in um, hostile environments uh, because of the anti-Chinese sentiment at the end of the uh, 19th century and early 20th century. So in this picture in the Mijong grocery store, you can see that the family gathers together um, by rearranging um, some of the products that they have for sale to use for living space for family dinners or for other gatherings. This is perhaps an extreme example, but it illustrates the fact that Chinese were not particularly welcome in the Delta during the early 1900s. So in this particular um, hate pamphlet um, entitled, Are You an American and a Mississippian? And do you believe in the Delta? Then would you rather see their business controlled by Chinese with our good American dollars being sent back to China and so forth? So there are a number of other points that were raised that were against the Chinese. The Chinese were accustomed to dealing with prejudice and just basically um, did not resist um, because they were very few in number. But a major crisis occurred by the 1920s as more Chinese started having families, either bringing them over from China or um, in some cases marrying American-born Chinese women and starting families. So when their children became of school age, this created a real crisis for Chinese who value education. The uh, articles shown in this slide illustrate the problem that in Rosedale, two Chinese girls who were attending school there were uh, asked not to return to the white school. The father, Gong Lum, took this case to the Supreme Court, both in Mississippi and eventually to the U.S. Supreme Court. However, the ruling was against the Chinese. 
creating this problem where uh, oh, scratch on this. now recently um, due to the diligence of and curiosity of a woman in the Delta Linda Gatewood Bassey who posted this photograph from 1924 in Rosedale and she asked can anyone identify the number three and number four girls who are on the left on the front row? And um, I spotted this and I had this epiphany that these girls were probably undoubtedly the two girls in the famous case that went to the Supreme Court which the Chinese lost. And I was able to verify this with relatives who um, did say that those two girls were, in fact, the two girls in this um, important um, court case. Consequently, the Chinese um, had to develop their own schools and through the um, cooperation with the Baptist Church in Cleveland and I believe also in Greenville, the Chinese uh, community leaders and the church leaders were able to provide some degree of uh, higher or better quality education than the Chinese could otherwise achieve. Last year, there was actually a commemoration of memories published in a book that was collated by uh, Paul Wong, who's shown in this photograph signing books, and uh, the late Doris Ling Lee. They uh, recruited people who had gone to the Chinese mission school to write reminiscences of their experiences and what it meant to them to have that education in the Chinese mission school. The Chinese were in a difficult situation, sort of neither black nor white and caught in between. And in the words of um, one person that was uh, interviewed for oral history, pointed out that while the Chinese were part of both worlds, they mainly kept to themselves. Um, they had to sort of walk a narrow line between the white and the black world because the black customers were their main source of their uh, economic livelihood. And yet they had to maintain some relation, positive relationship with the white world so their children could attend the white schools. And so you had this paradox, well not paradox, but you had this conflict that they had to donate money for sort of prejudicial white groups and yet at the same time they had to maintain good relationships with their black customers. So here are some photographs of, um, that's Peter Joe, in case you, you know him <laughs> on the right, and Evelyn Chu who is dancing with him, and uh, I guess um, some of the um, football players at Green Bowl. Um, so those are not very Chinese cultural sorts of activities these people are involved with. And I was a little surprised myself that there were that many Chinese in just football, because I didn't think their parents... With the passage of time over the years, the um, number of Chinese grocers has declined with retirement and death and many have moved to um, larger metropolitan areas such as Houston and California where many of their children with college educations have moved for better um, professional opportunities. So we could sort of say this rich community of Chinese in the Delta has sort of uh, begun to decline uh, over the last decade or so. <clears throat> Here is visual evidence of that. Here are two photographs of, in the top row of two um, stores in Greenville, the Mijong on the left and the Zhou Gao Nu number two on the right. And beneath 
are photographs of those same stores which are both empty shells of their buildings as I photographed them um, down about 2008. And so um, it continues to Delta, one that has actually been closed for uh, some number of years now. There's a strong sense of loyalty and emotional tie to the Delta, even among uh, the many who are no longer living there. And one sign of this renaissance of um, nostalgia about the Delta was that in last uh, year, the um, application to the state of Mississippi for an historic marker for the Cleveland Mission School, the Chinese Mission School, was dedicated in October. And here are some of the um, Chinese, some who still live there and some who came from out of town for this um, celebration of this recognition of the <coughs> contribution of this school. And finally, I'd like to just sort of close with um, this photograph of an event that was uh, honoring Wen Pat Pang, who was 100 years old this year. And as you may know, uh, in Mississippi, um, football is like another religion. And for them to honor uh, Chinese during halftime, uh, a man who grew up during the period of intense anti-Chinese sentiment, um, this was quite a remarkable uh, reflection of the changing and improved attitudes toward the Chinese in the Delta. This is much easier than actually getting a photo. This is much easier than actually getting a photo. Well, I'm from California. 